Hey, everybody, and welcome back again to another episode of the Wish You Were Beer Show. Thank you all for joining us. Uh, if you're not familiar, this is a weekly beer show that we do every Thursday night, 8 p.m. Eastern, where we try a new beer, drink different beers that some of us may have had, not had, try different breweries. Typically, we try to get them to come on and join with us and, and have some conversations. So if you're not familiar with it, go through back our, our past episodes. You can find them on our website, wishyourbeershow.com. Um, we do stream this through all the social medias as well. So Instagram, Twitter. Well, we don't stream it through Instagram, but we have an Instagram. We do. Which is important to notate. Yes. Um, so if you notice the banner down, down at the here. bottom. Yeah. Uh, well, it's not down here. It's it's on the screen down here. Um, that's a You've different, got a fat food on you too. How do you know that? That's a different Instagram handle there. Um, <laughs> that's a slow pour, side pour. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Little curvy pour. Little curvy pour, uh, slightly to the left. No, but uh, <laughs> thanks everybody for joining us again. Make sure you follow along with us through all the social medias. They're all listed down in the about section. Uh, make sure you find us on Untapped. That's where we review all the beers here for the show. Um, follow along with us because on we all use the social medias differently. So you can kind of see what Phil's up to when he's in St. Martin. You can see what Tiffany and I are up to on the weekends or when we're out of town as well. So it's a lot of fun. Um, if you haven't followed us before it's a good time i have a good time i don't yeah. know i don't know if anyone enjoys it but i fucking love it i mean you're blowing up on tiktok we're getting there uh we're yeah. almost at 69 followers which is where i shut it off that's we where we shut it down Instagram. yeah as soon as we get to 69 followers on tiktok though that's it and then i start so doing going going private on. and no one gets accepted <laughs> should be relatively simple to pull off actually uh <laughs> Uh, but if you've never joined us before, as always, I'm Daniel. This is Tiffany, the beautiful gentleman over there with one of our merch shirts is Phil. Yeah. Uh, Phil is wearing our Wish You Were Beer shirt that you can find, again, on the website. Uh, you can find it in the merch section. So if you do want to support us that way, please feel free to peruse through there. Go through the hundreds of shirts we've created for episodes and the five stock ones that we have made before as well. I should probably make a few more of those stock ones. Yeah, I think so. You know, just, you know, it's just been the, the other ones are just flying off the shelves, though. That's the problem. Oh, 100%. 100%. Uh, they can't. Honestly, it's how we make our money. I am <laughs> this close to merch quitting my day job. Yeah, very yeah. close. Kevin, welcome to the show. Vero. Dave. Vero. <laughs> Kevin. <laughs> Man, our chat section is blowing up right now. Uh, it's my favorite. So, uh, uh speaking Nolan of Adele songs, is a weird Adele song that she put out. <laughs> Very strange. <laughs> oh, I love it. Uh, speaking of beer in front, Dave, thank you again so much. If you guys didn't follow, uh, beer in front, they did a inaugural beer in front awards. Uh, so we had an award style show that was a lot of fun to me. And I got to swing through there, get a bunch of other beer drinkers and podcasters on there as well. Uh, it was a lot of fun to see a lot of those people and kind of be in the same room with them that we follow through all the social media channels. Yeah. Um, so he basically gave everybody a spreadsheet of about 20 beers and had them rate them uh, and then went through like an award show as to what was the top macro, the, the top micro, the top. The, it, was, it was a ton of fun uh, and got to drink a lot of beer. So if you didn't catch that, go go follow along on yeah. uh, Beer in Front and check it out. And Guinness came up top. Guinness came up top, man. Oh, wow. Yeah. Well, for the for the macro brands. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think Pliny the Elder came in for still within the realm of micro, even though it's not. At this well, point, no, because it was craft. Craft, right. Yeah, but yeah. it was like the big craft, the ones mm -hmm. that like people know. <laughs> I love that we got Dave's mother's approval because she's oh. only seen his show once. So if she likes us already, this is good. This bodes well. Uh, Tell her to like and subscribe. Tell her, what are you, what are you drinking there, big guy? I'm drinking Carib. I've had this on the show before. It's the classic beer in St. Martin around the Caribbean, hence the name. Yeah. Uh, basically, just kind of a Corona style yep. beer. Just easy drinking, have it on the beach all day. It's uh, like $2 in every bar. So it's the perfect beer. I love the fact that they were like, boy, we are struggling on the name of this beer. Carib. 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 I actually still don't even know if it's pronounced Carib because sometimes you'll be like Carib and they'll be like Carib and you'll be like, oh, come on. But then I say I mean, Carib and they're like Carib and you're like, come on. I think Carib does bat like a motherfucker. You can count on oh. that. 
<laughs> I could find out, but I, that, I don't know if that bat is clean at the moment. <laughs> he uses it a lot for uh, his other beverages. Yeah. <laughs> the problem is it's so hard to clean that in a sink. I got to take it in the shower. <laughs> you need specialized tools for it just to get to it. <laughs> we should uh, find out, though. When I'm back in St. Martin, because this is my last St. Martin show for a little bit. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Head so. back stateside like the rest of us losers. Yeah, things are gross there. I'll be yeah. back. I it's love very it. rainy today. So mm. yeah. Yeah, we lucked out. All that weather that's going through the north that is snow there is just rain here. Yeah. But we are supposed to get snow next week. Though, I know. Which means we, might we might get snow on Christmas in Virginia, which is outrageous. It would be the first white Christmas I've had since being here. Whoa. Oh, whoa, whoa. I don't think you say white Christmas oh. anymore. Uh, no. Again, it's 2022. This would be the first it's white holiday event on. <laughs> yeah, It'd be the holiday. first snowy Christmas. <laughs> I don't know. Well, uh, it'd be the first precipitation event of now. That's not going to work. Um, that's rain. Yeah, it could be well. yeah. frozen precipitation event. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Anytime I've done. That could also be hail. I mean, there's a lot. <laughs> We'll, we'll cover this next week on our weather page. <laughs> on what falls yeah. from the sky. <laughs> what falls from the sky. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, we've had that podcast for years. We are still talking about it. I love it. I love it. Well, you know, we, um, speaking of our social media, I don't know if, if you do follow along with us, Tiffany and I had a really great opportunity uh, earlier in the week. We got to yes. take a day off work. Sort of. That was it. Uh, that was the opportunity. That's a great day. God, I fucking love it. Um, no, but we have uh, a friend of the brewery at Tradition uh, who we've had on the show. His name's Chuck, and he works for Anheuser-Busch here locally. He's been there almost 20 years um, in the utilities section, so he gets to see just about every square inch of, of the facility out there. So he gave us uh, a couple of folks from Coastal, a couple of folks from Capstan, a couple of folks from Tradition, uh, a private tour of Anheuser-Busch. Yeah. It Which was, super was cool. fucking red. Like it was. They have. I don't, so I don't know this brewery. Is this just like a local Virginia brewery that you guys? Yeah, it's, it's one of the smaller ones around. I think they have a branch in St. Louis as well. Um, oh. But other than that, really, for, yeah. nowhere else. For them, they're expanding. That's nice to hear. <laughs> Phil, there were tanks <laughs> there that was like twenty thousand gallons, and there was. There's it looks like a James Bond movie. It's a dark corridor with those size barrels on and there's both four sides. stories of them. And you just like look down the hall and there's like 40 of well, these. So the, the kettles are four stories tall and there was 20 of those. No, but then they're stacked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The the chip tanks were stacked too. But yeah. Oh, also, fun fact that I did not know, and apparently Daniel did know. This is not trivia, it's fine. Um one yeah. tank held twice what Kevin brews at tradition a year. Yeah. Holy and cow. There, was, there was probably 60 to 70 of those tanks. Yeah. Um, they must have so much left over. Oh, they drink they it didn't straight give us, from the tap. They didn't give they us do any. not sell that beer. Um, no, but they use beechwood in their lagering tanks. So Bud, Budweiser and Bud Light are both aged on beechwood chips. Well, so, and they have them in these things, and the whole point is to actually make sure that, like, the yeast doesn't settle down at the bottom, so it actually, like, collects inside the, these, like, beechwood. It's almost like a submersible, looks like a tiny little submarine yeah. that they put the beechwood chips in, and as they load these giant 20,000 plus gallon tanks, before they do that, they push it into the opening so that it stays in there with it with the beechwood chips. Yeah, and it has to come out every single time. The whole tank has to be cleaned every single yeah. time. Like just our, our beechwood is is beechwood related to beech knot? It's very similar, um, different singers, obviously. <laughs> uh, that is a throwback reference that no one will ever ever get. Um, well, well, maybe we should make that our Christmas part of our Christmas episode. <laughs> I don't think we should do that. I'm okay with that. I don't think we should. <laughs> That's a reference that. only three people right here get. So Correct. if you're here looking for references you get, it's not going to happen. Tough shit, Sherlock, which is also yep. not a reference at all. So I don't know what to do. Um, Sorry, you know, Charlie. I tell you, one of the one of the crazy things about it, though, which I never would have thought about with a brewery of, of that magnitude or that size, um, 
is how, like, you know, we, we talk about some of these smaller breweries trying to be as green as possible or trying to reuse all the things as possible. They can zero footprint, all this jazz, this brewery, whether they want to do it or not, does it purely out of necessity on yeah. a scale of that size? Because they're trying to make, I mean, obviously I'm sure they want to do right by the environment, but they're also recapturing CO2 so that they're not having to buy it. They're taking condensation that builds naturally and then repurposes, repurposing it and using it as water for other parts of the plant. Like yeah. it was so like to wash the kegs. Yeah. Things. It was so like fucking crazy green that yeah. I never would have thought this plant was being yeah. size and volume and what yeah. they do. It was um, really cool. Yeah. Crazy. It, I, I remember just walking around and, and being like, just completely like, yeah. and like constantly looking up. Cause there was just so much stuff everywhere. And then we were like, looked inside some of the actual like kettles where they're like, you know, cooking the beer, so to speak. Um, and like, it was just, it was so huge. It's, it's, it was outrageous. I mean, I think it's like in my head, I knew like, this is about to be an extremely large scale facility. I did not, I did not comprehend yeah. even walking around how large everything was. Yeah, it was super cool though. It was, so it, was a, it was, it was a really weird opportunity that Obviously, it's a massive size organization. Yeah. You're not going to be allowed to take pictures in there. No. Um, I took 72, which I'll be sending you. Um, I had a low-profile GoPro on my hips. Kind of like, yeah. No. I've, got, <laughs> I've, got, I've, got video. I've actually got the video right here. Oh, uh, perfect. You know, I'm actually surprised it took you that long to drag that video in well, because I was like, it's going to happen. I knew there was going to be a moment, and I, I found it. <laughs> Located it. Um, but yeah, it was a really cool opportunity and it was, um, i for somebody who grew up in this area, that plant's been there since 72. I may have been in there once years and years and years ago when they used to do tours with it from Bush Gardens, you were able to go to like a tasting room, but they didn't do a tour like the capacity in which we got with yeah. somebody who's been there that long. Yeah. So, and just really wild. It was, it was absolutely ridiculous. Yeah. Anyway, I, I with something like that, how, like, I know that they're they're making so much beer and it's kind of the same beer most of the time. But every now and then, like, Budweiser comes out with, like, some kind of interesting. How much creativity do you think the people who work there feel like they have? Well, so, and that's kind of the tricky part. So, because they're owned by InBev, um, the amount of beer that gets produced in that facility that's not Budweiser related it's crazy. Yeah. So they make St. Pauli, they make Kieran Ichiban, they make um, all the different variations of Budweiser. Make like a the, Bud the Light, lime, Bud. like the seltzer, or not, yeah, Bud Lime, yeah. Bud Light Lime, they make. Um, but I would assume. Make, uh, Daddy Ice. Yeah. Yeah. So they make different variations of everything. Budweiser and Bud Light are the only two left over that are still aged on Beachwood. So yep. that's probably the really repetitive one for, for all those guys. Yeah. Um, I mean, they're all probably repetitive because you're doing like. You're I not feel like, that. Yeah, I feel like it's such a, I mean, I guess if there's any corporate world in the beer world, that's it, where you're just kind of Thanks. building things yeah. exactly to standard and you don't really get to have any fun with it. So I kind of. Well, and I think I we also, fun. you know, we made a joke while we were in there, not, not a really a joke, but kind of a realization that how crazy it is that you can go to England and get a Budweiser and it's the same fucking Budweiser that you'll get here. Yeah. Because even all the brewers we know, all the people that we know within the industry, it's very difficult yeah. scientifically to make the same beer twice. Yeah. It can be pretty goddamn close, but to do it twice on that scale, that is a science unto yeah. itself and, and a weird process and systems in place that I think is probably intriguing to people that actually brew or have that head brewer mindset yeah. of I wanna I wanna get this honed in and down to a science and be successful and be I, I think there's two different types of, of brewers in the world. Ones that really want to just do some crazy shit and have a good time and make good beer. No problem. Um, but most of the brewers that I know that brew on larger scales are extremely business. I mean, yeah. extremely, let's make the best beer. Let's try to replicate the best beer we've made and let's do it yeah. this way, this way. This and way. then I think, I mean, from what I understand, a lot of those people like they'll homebrew on the side, so they still get like that creative brewing stuff. But Can you imagine if you go to one of their parties though, and he's homebrewed Bud Light. Come on, <laughs> motherfucker, give me something, man. Uh, oh, they also made yeah, yeah like, this was made in my garage. Yeah, just yeah. Like, this is different. Yeah, this is aged on these nuts. <laughs> 
and we'll see you all next week. <laughs> all right, so enough of that. Um, we, we had a blast, though. I, I really do want to say thank you to Chuck, uh, who, yes. who was kind enough to, to give us that opportunity, and obviously to everybody at Tradition who kind of introduced us to Chuck and, and in turn gave us that opportunity. Thank you. Uh, but let's talk about what we're doing tonight. Thank let's you. drink a beer tonight. Let's do it. That's, that's not apparently mass what news. We'll do. Yeah, apparently that's that's a whole thing on the show. Um, so tonight we're we're actually doing a beer um that we were lucky enough to go to the go to the actual brewery while we were down with tripping animals because this brewery is also in doral um it's called unseen creatures and we're doing an amber ale from them tonight which is called a gamma this one's actually out of miami is why we were in miami um yes. brewed and yeah. packaged by prison pals in doral for unseen creatures so right. the brewery's the brewery. in miami uh, but prison pals actually came to this one for them so they gave a shout out on the cake. Hardcore Florida and need to know the difference. Breweries yes. in Miami. They Correct. Make it in Doral. Doral? Well, Doral? This, I, is it Doral or Doral? It's Doral. The cigarettes are Doral. I don't know what the city we is. We talked about it multiple times. We look up correcting me because it's I, Doral. Do I know uh, where it is? Yes, but speaking know. of uh, that trip in general, <laughs> where, we, where, we, where we brewed uh, our beer, our manual, don't brew it. Yeah, do y'all see the news with uh, Taylor and Christian? Yeah, Taylor and Christian got engaged. Yeah, yeah. Shout out to them. Congrats. They were. Yeah. I, I would say I could have seen it coming based on hanging out with them and the way they were together. Like, yeah, no, no doubt in my mind. Yeah, I'm ex I'm excited for them, and I'm just hoping, really, and I want. And this is stupid selfish. He wants me. an invite. No, I'm I'm not worried about the no. invite. I'm not I know what you're thinking. What? You want the beer at their wedding. One. That is one. Yeah. I want the beer to be served at the wedding if they can get a case of it before that happens. And two, I want Emmanuel to be fully healthy so that he can wear a tuxedo. Oh, yeah. That is all. Yeah. I want him to I, actually do the wedding. Just... <laughs> I want him to be the videographer. Yeah. yeah, I want the video to be them like right before like, you may now kiss and then Emmanuel walks in. <laughs> Oh, that is true. This is the second brewer we've had that uh, has, has done co-packaging with Prism yeah. House. I think Prism House just probably has a, a great... They probably have a great setup. canning setup or yeah. a larger holding facility for this stuff. Yeah. <coughs> Which is great. But yeah, I'm I'm excited for this beer, mainly because uh, I do like Amber Ales any day of the week, but also oh, yeah. it's, again, it's another one that we've we've had the chance to go to, which is always adds a little bit of a and intrigue in the beer, so to speak. And speaking of that, we've a video for tonight. It actually has us in it at the brewery. So I don't remember the video. So I remember the there. video. I, I think it not. was pretty good. If I recall, I do not recall this. at all. Well, let's take a look at the three of us walking into unseen creatures. Uh, and then we'll talk about this beer. Let's, let's get into it. it. Let's do it. That was a hot track, by the way. I don't Thank you. That. Yeah, I really dug that. <laughs> yeah, it was playing yeah. there. That's actually the track that was playing at the brewery, so it worked out. That's interesting. Yeah, <laughs> the Halloween decor. That's recent. They just kept it up. I don't know why. Yep. Yeah, we took that video last week. That's the weird part. Yeah, <laughs> like let it go. <laughs> now, um, so yeah, we we had a good time down there. Um, Tiffany and I actually got to swing through there like twice. Yes. Because we went back down on the weekend of the, the other beer release as well. Um, but it was funny because when we were there, we, we mentioned the show while we were there. And actually, they gave us a really solid, Ugh. it was a mixed fermentation that had some honey and different things. And cherry. Cherries. Oh, yeah. Cherries. Yeah. It was unlabeled. Yeah. Like, I couldn't yeah. even check it in because I was like, I don't know what the fuck this is. I remember where it came from, but there's no yeah. name. So we, uh, they are really big into 
like the the mixed fermentation and like the farmhouse style which is where you see in their name you know yeah. the, the blending portion of things yep. is really um wh where that comes from yeah so it was it was a, <coughs> a variation that used like cherries and and honey and it was like the most pretty like pink color that was super good it was too delicious. yeah it, it was a little funky but with some of that like sweetness almost that you get yeah. from mead without all the sugars and and yeah. all the stuff that which mead it. is we also went to a meadery while we we're there yeah it's just very sweet yeah it's kind of cool because unseen creatures sits in like this weird I, kind right of by lincoln's beard yeah it's in an industrial complex so you can walk pretty much from lincoln's beard over to unseen creatures and then kind of triangulated from them is seba which is a uh, a, a meadery, meadery yeah. as well so like inside of the same parking lot yeah. you can pretty much hang out all day which is yeah. always fun and no. uh we saw more people get walking beers to go from one to the other. Still not legal. Yeah. Um, but but nobody tells on you if you're not an asshole. Yeah. So. So Daniel got caught. No. No, no I no. did not, very well. We did together. not do walking beers, did we? No. I don't no, know. No, 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 no. I got a ride. Um, I got a ride over there. You guys decided to walk. Yeah, I'm a rule follower, man. I'm not doing walking yeah. beers if it's not legal. Well, let's get into some. Uh, Oh, we could do history and facts. Uh, yeah, I think that would be fun. I've actually decided we're just going to call this history and facts now. And then we start trivia and everyone's like, well, this isn't history and facts at all. I want it to be equally as confusing for the audience. But um, I mean, if, technically trivia is sharing facts sure, and history about sure. the group, which so, is where I came up with the history and facts from the end. If you're not familiar with the show, uh, history and facts is actually our trivia portion of the show. So we're going to be asking some trivia questions. Uh, if you're logged in through YouTube or Facebook, uh, you can actually comment along with us. So if you would like to chime in with your answers, we'll give you a few seconds to chime in uh, before we reveal the actual answer. And again, tonight we are uh, we are doing history and facts slash trivia on Agama, which is an amber ale from Unseen Creatures out of Miami. Can our killer. Of course. Canard is fantastic. Fucking killer. Yep. Yeah. All right. Let's get into it. Get into it. All right. So the co-owner of Unseen Creatures got his start in the beer industry doing what job? A, a cellarman. B, an assistant brewer. C, a YouTube channel moderator. Or D, a freelance writer. Oof. I hope it's YouTube. I really hope it's YouTube. That I hope it's <laughs> Uh, Andy, wait, we are in the first question, but okay, okay, he already answered. Uh, so well done, sir. <laughs> Jesus. What I mean, what technically is a cellarman? So a cellarman is typically somebody that works in the back of the house from a brewery standpoint, but is doing more potentially canning, packaging, or lower level brewing. Um, so not not large scale like production, like he's not coming up with recipes. He's not, you may have a seller. Or that, she is not, I don't know, you keep calling. Correct, I apologize. Um, but yeah, so a, a sellerman, which is the name of the term, could be male or female. Um, but they're typically doing lower level brewery tasks, not necessarily the actual brewing process. They just want to go to the seller. <laughs> okay. I, I think I'm going YouTube channel moderator because, yeah. and here's why this for me, it's uh, Daniel, you did this trivia this week, right? Correct. Yes, sir. Uh, YouTube channel moderator seems like something that you wouldn't think of as a full thing. I feel like, you feel like you, if you would come up with this, it would have been YouTuber or like YouTube talent or something. The you, full you don't think channel, I know what a YouTube channel moderator is? It's not that I don't think that you know what it is. I think it's that you wouldn't have thought of it in the question writing. Yeah, so I can't wait to look at your face. I'm going YouTube channel moderator. That's what I went with because it was like God. the one that kind of stood out the most. This is going to feel so good for me. Go ahead. Because I am that intelligent. It is C, uh, YouTube channel moderator. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so, you know, it's funny though, is actually, so the, <laughs> the YouTube channel moderator wasn't a moniker that was in the, the things that I read about him. I do know what that is to some, but yes, it would not have been my go-to like C choice. Um, 
but basically the the owner and his wife who who are co-owners of the brewery um and honestly i totally forgot to write his name down which sucks i apologize but do you have it somewhere Dave. uh no, anyway, him and his wife were actually more wine people originally before he even got into this industry. And um, so he he started to get interested in beer and went down a rabbit hole of beer, but didn't really know the beer community or know a lot of things about it. It is Marco. Thank you, Vera. Um, I was getting there. Marco. Yeah. Vera's so, always got it for us. <laughs> I just, it's baffling to me that no one typed polo in the section underneath of that comment but whatever i guess we laugh differently um <laughs> so but no he, he they were big wine people and so when he started to get into beer he didn't really have like the community backing or like know the community like they had come to know the wine community so he actually started a web page called craft commander which actually is is I, he must still own because i did look into it and it's still up nobody's posted it in a long time obviously but it is still that that thing. Um, but then it swapped into or kind of transformed into a YouTube channel under the same moniker, like Craft Commander. And he was basically the moderator of bringing all these beer people on and leading all these discussions on craft beer, yeah. styles of beer, why they like it, why they didn't like it. So basically, he may have inadvertently kind of paved the way for this show to even work. Wow. Which is kind of interesting. That is. But we can't put this around. Uh. Yeah, I know, but history repeats itself. Good ideas um, are yeah, not. But I just want everyone to know. Yeah. Agreed, Gabriel. It's probably a way better show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Tell me how that Craft Commander shirt looks, though. Oh, what? Yeah. Does he have 70 shirts on his website right now? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I love it. Just couple dudes talking about spruce tips. couple of dudes talking. A couple of bros discussing spruce tips. Hey, you're going to bring it up. It's going <laughs> to pop up. Still probably my favorite shirt, actually. Uh, all right. Well, let's uh, let's do question two. Let's let let's get into it. Do it. So this one should be relatively simple. Um, if you read the about portion on this week's episode or if you've looked at the can art, which we did show earlier. But what does Agama translate to? To the earth we return, tradition, sacred work, scripture, or an old world lizard? I mean, I looked at the can. Uh, I'm going with lizard on this one. Big old D. That's where I'm going. Dropping Ds in the comments. Oh, nope. Mm -hmm. Although I could be wrong because, nope, no, nope, probably not wrong. I looked at the can. Yep. Yeah. It would be kind of weird if it was now like something different. I think it would be... Uh, Obviously, the, the answer is D. Like I said, this is this is an easy one. Um, we're getting there, Gabriel. I gotta, I'll drink the beer in a second. Oh, wait. I see what you're saying. Uh, but, yeah, obviously it is D based off the can art. Uh, but I thought it was interesting. So when, when I was looking into the word, there are, like, probably three other actual translations to it, depending on how far back you trace the word. Um, well, yeah, but old world lizard. <laughs> that is obviously the oldest no translation. no no so they are mainly sub-saharan africa um although yes florida in 76 florida has all the weirdest shit and i fucking love it you want to go catch an agama live in the field you don't have to go to africa just venture on down to florida because some dumbass bought it as a fucking pet yeah uh, now they're and, eating everything and the iguanas yeah. yep i every time i like see an iguana and i just like dinosaur yeah they are uh, <laughs> weird looking animals man they got like spines and they're very bright sorry Dude, i'd love to hear your thoughts on iguanas uh, <laughs> that so it was interesting though because agama did translate different directions depending on how far back you went so tradition is actually a translation of it through like buddhism uh, there was another like Hinduistic version of it as well that that meant something different. Um, but I had to look up old world. Do you know what old world actually means? No, tell me. This is how fucking arrogant we are as Americans. Before America, before we discovered the United States, is uh, the yeah. old world. Interesting. Like, the world's pretty fucking old. Long before we found the United States. <sighs> yeah, <laughs> that is true. Oh. The lounge of lizards. God, I love it. A smack of jellyfish. Burger of crows. Oh, I love it. All right. 
Good? Yes, I'm good. Question three. Let's do it. All right. So what gives an amber ale its color profile? Is it amber malts with caramel, amber malts and crystal malts, amber malts crystal malt? or crystal malts? Wait a second. This is this a trick question? This is not a trick question. There, there is a little bit of intricacy in here that Kevin may argue with me on. I'm going to argue with you on this. You one. can argue with me all you want, but I know the fucking answer because I, I read it. I think you're wrong. Oh. Okay. Perfect. Where'd you read it from? I need you to cite your sources. Okay. Yeah, she, does, she doesn't do trivia one week and she's suddenly trivia. This is, well, this is two weeks in a row. And yeah, uh, yeah, let's start citing your sources on trivia. Yeah. Where's our where's truth. our truth? Truth. <laughs> truth. <laughs> truth. All right, so is it the amber? True or false? Get all the above. What? No, that it's, doesn't it's make sense. A and B. It's caramel and the crystal malts. I don't know. I'm. I mean, it's Florida crystal meth malt, <laughs> and I don't know where I'm going with this one. Go Gabriel's ahead. going B on this one. I mean, they're all they're all kind you of a little think caramel. Are you saying B? No, it's B ish. <coughs> B ish. Yeah. All right, Tiffany, what's your reasoning? Why is it B ish instead well, of just caramel is also in there, and that's usually. But is it always in there? Ooh. Yes. And is it what gives it its color? Color. Color, not flavor. Color, yes. Caramel is a flavor profile. But do just amber malts alone give it the color of amber? Mm. Yeah, it's caramel. You would need the crystal malt. malt and the caramel. Would the color alone with just amber malts provide the color? I'm going with A, B. Okay, so the answer is B. You can achieve the color profile of this beer with just amber and or crystal malts. You don't even need both of them. Wait, so it's C. No. Let's see. It's all of the above. Ah. Wait. I am confused. Daniel, explain this to me then. If you just well, said you can do it with amber, with just the malt and or something else, <laughs> then it's C. No, no, no. It's just you can do it. You can achieve it with just one or two of the malts. It is typically amber and crystal malts to get the general color profile out of an amber ale if it is, in fact, a true amber ale. Caramel is a flavor profile, um, has nothing to do with the actual malts and the color of the beer. You can look it up. Don't. The internet exists. Don't fucking live check me. Yeah. Yeah. Do you want to do that every week? Yeah, yeah. Yell, at, yell at him after the show, not during Thank the you. show. Look, y'all can, can do some fucking trivia next week. This shit's out. Hey, you know what's exciting about three questions in? What's that? We had to we do it after the beer. Kevin typically you know drinks the red ale with crystal malts to get the color. You know what's not exciting, though? I have to make Ooh. this 12 ouncer last until the review portion of the show. Oh, good luck out there. Yeah. Let me know how Thank that goes. Thank goodness you have that Kareem. That Kareem. I got another Kareem in here in case I need it. But, <laughs> all right. Question four. Let's do it. Okay. So, what is the logo on the Unseen Creatures logo? What is what is the Unseen Creatures logo? Sorry, I was trying to pour a beer and read. Um, is it a barn owl, a snow owl, an eastern screech owl, or a barred owl? Ooh. Barn owl. It's so much fucking good. Yeah, it's, it's a good thing I know my owls. I uh, figured that would be the case with this one. This is a crapshoot. I'm going with barn owl. Okay. I'm going to go with Eastern Screech Owl. Big fan of the Eastern Screech Owl. Uh, that's our local owl, and yes. I am also a big fan. Makes a really pretty sound that's wonderful to listen to at any point in the morning. Yes. <laughs> is it really like a shitty screech? Oh, it is a yeah. crazy high-pitched screech. Yeah, it's nasty. I like Gabriel's answer there. It's the one from Harry Potter. Hedwig. <laughs> Hedwig. Woo! All right, so what's everybody's name? I said A. Okay. I'm going with C, but now I know I'm wrong because I think it's local to Virginia. Perfect. Um, it is a barn owl, but actually all these answers are wrong. Because it's actually an antlered owl. It's a barn owl with antlers, which is an unseen creature. So You'll never see one. <laughs> ah, nice. It's like the, the antler, the deer 
I was I was getting there, Vero. <laughs> now I just love the idea. Like I was really trying to like figure out like unseen creatures. Like, come on, what is this and that? And it was just like, yeah, it's a barn owl with antlers. You'd never see that. It's an unseen, unseen. creature. I'm like, oh, that's really easy. Yeah. Damn it. <laughs> it's a it's a barn owl who consumed caramel malts. <laughs> Uh, I love it. All right. We got one more, I think, right? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Let's do it. All right. So true or false to the earth. We return is a new England IPA that highlights how co-owner Marco lives his life. See, I did put his name in here. I just didn't put it early enough for me to fucking remember it. True. To the earth. We return is highlights. Co okay. Uh, I, I want to know the story behind this, but I'm going to go with true, and then uh, let's let you tell me the story. <laughs> Seems like a weird false. Oh, so I guess I do a lot of drugs, Phil. <laughs> yeah, too odd not to be. See? Okay, I see yeah. where this is going. Unless it's not yeah. a New England IPA. It's just Aha. a West Coast IPA. Is it a New England IPA? Ah, a little I trickery. Don't play, I don't play stupid half games with this. It is true. Yeah. <laughs> um yeah so it is one of their their you know well-known new england ipas um and it is called to the earth we return so marco is is always historically you know self self-proclaimed trying to live a simpler life trying to trying to get back to the things that ground him to nature to the earth um he calls it living more analog uh he uses that term a lot which i, I thought was really interesting because like from a brewery standpoint you know, again, it's one thing to have those ideas and to try to try to achieve that within a business model, but also still trying to maintain that within your personal lifestyle. I, I can't. That would be really difficult to connect. But after reading that about him and after being in the brewery, yeah, some of the minimalisticness of it, yep. some of the beers yeah. that they're producing. And I there was like, is like oh. a lot of like nature in the brewery. Yeah, too. I was like, this makes perfect fucking sense, actually. Yep. Like you should put your business model on the wall so I connect to it. Like yep. that's way easier. Yeah. Otherwise, I had to find a 2017 interview with some place down in Miami and find out what the fuck you're talking about. Yeah. Good old Miami Dade. Mm-hmm. All right. <laughs> Fun fact, they did do a collab with Equilibrium and called it To Space We Go. <laughs> oh, nice. We, we did have an Equilibrium beer on the show that was really solid as well. Yes, we so, did. yes. I mean, throw an Equilibrium at me and it's probably going to be solid. So It's probably going to be good. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. All right, well, no, no. I'm asking you, please throw me an Equilibrium beer. Oh, well, I can't reach you. Anyone here. sees me, just throw one at me. <laughs> what you wish for Phil. yeah true story <laughs> uh, all right well let's what do we let's, do next? let's review the beer yeah all right so if you're unfamiliar with the show this is the portion where through untapped which is a social beer drinking app we're going to use that platform to check this beer in and rate it one to five bottle caps one being the worst five being the best um, and tonight we are reviewing Agama, which is from Unseen Creatures. It's an amber ale, and it's out of Miami. All right. I'd like somebody so, else to go first because I've been talking and I haven't drank much of it yet. Um, I Tiffany, like why don't you tell us? Yeah, I like this. It's um, So usually with amber ales, they're a little bit sweeter. This one is not very sweet, which I can't decide if I like it more... Or if I'm disappointed. Mm. Mm, interesting. It's always tough if you're expecting something yeah. out of the style that you normally get and then you don't get it. It's, that could be good. It's not, one. it's almost like has like an IPA ish, mm. like at the very end, but it's not like piney. I can't, I can't describe it. Okay. It's just not sweet. Well, um, you, uh, sorry to interrupt. I'm just, I, because I I'm trying to what are you smelling in this beer? It's it's got a very interesting scent and I can't figure it out, but I know I've smelled it before. I don't know. I used Afrin right before this show. <laughs> so and I have been sick for like a week now between the two of us. Yeah. So what okay. do I smell? Nothing. I smell a lot of my nose running. Oh, oh, this is great. So well, uh, for me, it's uh, <laughs> 
oh, what, what Barrow mentions here. So it is lightly malty. And I think a lot of the aroma that you get and even yeah. some of the not sweet characteristics are really the malt coming through more than anything else. Yeah. Which I'm fine with. Okay, it's sorry like to very, continue. Very, I didn't want to interrupt, but I, I thought it might help if I was listening to no, you talk. No, it's, it's 100% the malt. If yeah. you grab a bag of malt in yeah, some it, capacity, that, that's almost the smell of it. Yeah. Obviously, yeah I think that's exactly what it was, but I don't think I've ever smelled malt so strong. Mm -hmm. I think that it's like, I feel like, you know what, it, it's reminding me. Yeah, no, continue. All right, this is what it is. That's, that's literally what it is. Yeah. Um, All right. Continue, Tiffany. Sorry. Yeah. So it's it's a good beer. It's definitely dry uh, versus sweet. It is malty. It's uh, you know how there's the beers that like kind of dry out your mouth and then you want to you like have to keep drinking it to like I don't know fix the palate. It's one of those beers, so you like want to just keep drinking it, which is good because it's a good beer. Um, I I don't know what I think about it, so I'm gonna give it a. 3.75. Okay. Like, not a bad score by any means, but I just... You don't have to preface yeah, your, your not, score. You can just give a score. It's not knocking my socks off because I'm not wearing any, but... <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. Yeah. So, I, I, I agree with you. I um, It's not as sweet as I normally get from an amber, um, and I actually probably like that better. Um, I don't get as much of like that caramelly type sweet note to it. Yeah. Um, I like malts. I, I like malt, like heavy and, and malt forward beers. Yeah. So I, I'm on the opposite end of this. I think this is probably better than some of the amber ales that we normally drink or have other places. Uh, but I think a lot of that just has to do with my flavor profile that I like. Um, so for me, solid four, clean across the board. Easy. Okay. Yeah, I'm 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 a little I'm thrown by this beer because I think when I read Amber Ale, I, I'm with you, Tiffany. Like I like the sweetness of an Amber Ale. Um, yep. I think that's what kind of gives it that. But I'm interested in this because it just because of that maltiness without the sweetness, it's it's very it's interesting for sure. It's an interesting beer. Um, it wouldn't be what I'd expect when I picked up an Amber Ale. Um, yeah. So that makes it a little like, but I also have no idea what you would call it to advertise it as what it is. Well, I so. think with, with the color of it and with the malt forkness, you're almost getting into a brown ale versus an amber ale sometimes. Yeah. Mm. The, the color is too light for it. Um, there, there's not enough like heaviness to it to really be a, like a true brown ale. Um, but yeah, I, I, it's almost pushing that realm. I shouldn't have yeah. had sour ale before this. I think that really kind of messed my palate up too. Probably. It was that, the, uh, unability, inability to smell. That doesn't Yeah, matter. but it was a pretty can. Oh, interesting. Gabriel's going three. That's a deep three. I'm okay with it. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm struggling with the score on this one because it's, it's good. It's not not good, but I'm going as... We've been given such high scores lately. This one, I'm, I'm not. It, uh, this was a tough one for me because yeah. I'd love to drink it again. It's so easy to drink. It's delicious. There's nothing wrong with it. But I'm like, I'm yeah. with you, Tiffany, on this. It's, it's not blowing my socks off. And I'm not wearing pants. But, <laughs> like, <laughs> that's where I'm going. So I'm, I'm going to. Oh, but it is good. So, I know. That's why I was like at three seven five. I guess I don't know. I, mean, I think I'm right there with you. I think I'm going to go three point seven five on this as well. I don't think it's deserving of a four, but it is a very good beer. Yeah, fair. Yeah, you know. But I think when I get an amber ale, I, I this is not what I expect. But that yeah. So yeah, three point seven five, and that's actually gonna that'll be the show score because that's yeah. Tiffany and I. That I almost there. went three point five because I was just like, it's still like again, it's not a bad beer. Like anything over a three is, I will drink this again. Right. Yeah. Um, but it's just kind of like, eh. yeah. like yeah. Okay. I mean, I think once again, I, I think we. Uh, I, I mean, I will say it's a good twelve ounce six pack beer. Yeah. It's not yeah. a. I see why they wouldn't want this in a four pack sixteen ounce. 
Yep. It's, it's one of those beers. I had a six pack in there. I'd have two or three of them, you know, rather than the 16 ouncer. So yep. Yep. I think they did the right thing by putting it in a 12 ounce can. I think it was the right idea. It's a good everyday amber ale. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. So 3.75, well, which is 3.75 okay. for the show score. So we gave Agama from uh, Unseen Creatures out of Miami, Florida, 3.75. Let's find out yeah. what everyone else thinks of this beer. Can we go to my favorite section that we haven't had much time for as of late? What? What section is that? Uh, the untapped reviews. It's, yeah, it's that's good. I want to see. It's my favorite portion of the show. Because we like to make fun of people. No, I just, it's interesting to me to see what other people think and then how bad yeah. they are taking pictures. Yes. <laughs> so let's get into, this is the portion where we go into Untapped and we find out what other people thought of this beer so we can find out if what we were thinking was similar, wrong, and we can also look at their terrible iPhone 8 photos. Here we go. <laughs> oh, uh, actually, photo, actually. Pretty solid fucking picture, actually. Damn yeah, it is nice. Yeah. Strong malt backbone with a hoppy citrus aftertaste, some smoke, and a bit dry. So I don't get any, I don't get any smoke from it. I don't get smoke, but I get the dry. And I that's, think that's the malt backbone, though. It'll give you a lot of those similar characteristics. Yeah. I think that's the smell. There's Fair. like, like you, the, you, the, the malt does give a little smoky smell, I guess. Okay. Maybe that's what I'm smelling. Okay. Michelle drinks a lot of American beers and not a lot of red eels. She loves a thumb ring. Oh, God, who doesn't? You throw a toe yeah. ring on that thing, I'm on it. Okay. Yeah. A pre-hurricane amber. Oh, good. So they survived the hurricane, I hope. <laughs> oh, man. Imagine, like, going into a hurricane and this is the beer you decide to have. Like, oof. So they, get to, they gave it a 3.75 as well. But also, imagine going into a hurt. I assume the electricity's already gone out and they took this picture with a flashlight. Because basically you're trying to show the lizard on the can and you completely fucking washed it out. The beer yeah. looks like it's a fucking brown ale. Like I mentioned, it's so dark because of the light. What is happening here? I don't know. Ah, Gainesville, that's what's happening. Never mind. <laughs> that answers it. Yeah. All right, back up a little bit. The invasive you know. lizard that does not look like mm -hmm. the can, which otherwise amazing. This beer is pretty good too. Three point two five. Yeah. So they they knew the background. They're obviously in Florida, so they probably see these lizards. But Big I imagine lizards. the can art was probably geared towards the original version the of old the lizard. World Correct. Version. Versus you know it's now just butt fucking everything in Florida. This lizard in Florida has already mated with fourteen crocodiles. And it's yeah. not a dinosaur. And it survives on Mountain Dew. So yeah. you know. and hot flaming Cheetos. <laughs> this lizard is a banshee, man. He is rough. Uh, wrong with you? Oh no, Vera must have put this one in. That makes sense. Uh, they really liked it. Hold on, it's good. They like the malt. It's uh, Una Ember Americana muy buena. La Pulada Amarca y Mautosa, regulated by their friend Pulada de Manuel, regalo de un amigo que llegó de EU, oh, well, that's a word, y es amigo del dueño muy buena. That's, I, I'm, look, I'm the Ben Affleck of Spanish, so I nailed that. All right. I love that bad pictures just transfer internationally anywhere you go. Look at this <laughs> terrible picture that he took, like, at, I assume is, like, stepmom's dining room at the cafeteria she works at. Like, it's so blurry, and this... They just focus on the bubble in the very top rim of that glass. Mm -hmm. Also, the coloring here is completely confusing as well. It's... Yes. Yes, All the color. I mean, I guess that's just lighting and it's know, overhead lighting color. versus yeah, yeah. Because it's yeah. very red. Yeah. Well, it's hard to see this way because yeah, I mean the, the beer's definitely got the, like a red tinge to it. Like it it looks like a red ale, which is good. Yeah. All right. We ready to move on? Hold well, on. Let's get some clarification. Oh, he yeah. is friends with the owner. He lives in Mexico. It's hoppy for him and very malty. Yeah, see that's Thank you, getting the hoppiness. Yeah, like yeah. that, like no, you said it. I totally it. nailed it. Uh -huh. We should do the show every week. Oh God, that would be an awful idea. Imagine doing this every <laughs> week. Uh, 
Well, I think I think we have one more section left. One more. Let's do it. All right. So this is the portion of the show we do every week where we take a second and talk about something we wish was beer versus what it actually is. Um, so we'll just reflect on something we wish was beer other than its actual thing, which Tiffany always goes first because she's locked and loaded and ready to go. Well, I had a, a major announcement to make about um, my <laughs> this one. my wish you were beer, mm-hmm. but um, it's just some trading cards, so it's really mm-hmm. not a big deal. Mm-hmm. Um, so this week, my wish you were beer isn't my new NFT trading cards. Ah. It is actually just my ex-husband because I like beer. <laughs> That's a pretty easy one, actually. I'll just let that one go. Daniel. <laughs> I see, there's nothing else that needs to be said. It's perfect. Yeah. I like beer. Yeah. I like him. Ah. And if if he was a beer, you could just pour him another drain every time you cracked it open. Yeah, true so. story. Or throw him through a window or yeah. whip him at a neighbor or all the other yeah. things we do with beer cans. Uh, Crush it. We live in a trailer park. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> he lives next door. Right. <laughs> so my, mine is directly in line with Vero's. That That's Tiffany, what I tried to <laughs> That Tiffany touched on a little bit as well. Uh, my, mine's a little more in depth than that, but I'll keep it short. But I honestly just wish the upcoming presidential election that is about to be the biggest shitstorm in the United States history was beer, because then I'd be excited about it. Um, well, I mean, he's better than Lincoln and even and he, Washington. I'm not talking about Lincoln or Washington. I'm not even mentioning names of other people. No, you just be my specifically goal. said that in the... I'm sorry. Again, is it, would you like to wish you were a beer? I am. This is exhausting. My other wish for Everyone beer can is do trivia Daniel, and then wish I'd you were beer for me. Like um, I'll just sit here and be the most attractive male in this live stream. Jury's out. <laughs> can we make wish you were beer trading cards? Sell them on the site? I mean, we could. It seems yeah, like we could. Right um, well, that was, that's Tiffany's wish you were beer. No, it's no. not my question. I didn't get to finish mine. So, Phil, uh, please continue. I'd like to hear your wish you were beer. We'll all be silent. I mean, mine, mine's popping up just because uh, I, I, you two know this, but the rest of the, the people watching do not. Uh, I jumped onto this uh, show about 10 minutes before the show started because I came flying in because I played uh, paddle ball tonight as an adult and as someone who is not athletic. Uh, <laughs> And I just, I wish I, you know what? I wish adult sports were beer because I know beer kind of always is involved in adult sports where we adults are like, we need to exercise, but I don't like exercising, but let's go play a sport and then let's just pound beer afterwards. Uh, and I just love this concept. So I almost wish that uh, one of our future beers was called like adult sport league or something of that nature where it's like, maybe we have a beer where like we drink, and it's like a lager, just one of those after sport league beers that you drink. Not a bad idea. So I wish it was beer because I played paddle ball for the first time tonight, had a blast, uh, and I'm sitting in a pool of my own sweat. So here we are. <laughs> uh, I love it. Andy wishes wet diapers were beer because we're fully stocked with one, but not the other. Your diapers yeah. are fully dry. Yeah, you should be stocked with fully dry diapers. Also, diapers. really weird because they do not have a kid. Yeah, so I don't know what weird. diapers they are talking about. Oh, do they have a kid? Oh. He is in some weird shit. Oh, two part joke. Number two joke. No, no, wait, never mind. We'll go back. We'll go back on that one. Um, Gabriel, I'm not pulling any more of your marriage wish you were beers. <laughs> Pull it in. I'm talking about dead dogs or something less depressing. <laughs> <laughs> I wish my marriage was beer, then critiquing the can art wouldn't land you on the can. <laughs> All right, I'll continue to pull them in if they're that good or better. But that's the bar now. If they're lower than that, you get out of the chat. <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. All right, All right well. Uh, this is the last show, so yeah, but it's uh, over after this because. No. Well, we do have a show next week. We what? Apparently, we have a show next week. Sort of. We're yeah. 
So next week, um, if you celebrate this holiday coming up, uh, we're, we're going to take some time off and spend some time with family. I mean, there's plenty of holidays happening. I understand that, Tiffany. Not everybody celebrates Christmas. I said, Just calm down. Whoa, whoa. We already said that word. Right. You can't say it. Twice. I fucking celebrate Christmas, for God's sake. I mean, I have a Did tree. you get it? you get it? Oh, no. Is it me or them? This is when the show gets really good, when I don't know if yeah, anyone I can hear me. I thought, no, because we've got one bar up here, so maybe it's us. <laughs> oh, there we go. You're back. Okay. Yeah, I thought you were ditching me in the last five minutes of this show. Did you imagine? We, we thought about it. Now we have yeah. two bars. Doesn't All right, surprise so me. we're, we're going to take some time off next week. We'll, we'll probably put up some pre-recorded stuff, just like a short stint, just to say... You know, hello to everybody and wish everybody a happy holidays. But um, <laughs> everybody go spend some time with family next week if you have the opportunity to or friends. <laughs> uh, <laughs> he's the thing got the balls for that. Um, <laughs> now, nah, but make sure you go spend some time with family, friends, anybody you want to spend time with. We're, we're going to do the same thing and uh, just kind of take a week off and, and try to decompress a little bit, which is what the actual holidays are for. Yeah, and then we're back for our uh, last show of the year after that. So. Yeah, yeah. So we'll, we will do a New Year's show. Um, I think I, we talked about this. I, I think we're gonna do Miller High Life. That's it's right, the champagne right. of beer. That's right. We wanted to do a beer that everyone could get. Uh, last year we had a blast doing New Year's Eve with everyone yeah. that wanted to come on the show, wanted to be involved. Uh, I'll be back in the murder room for that episode. Yeah, so that very exciting. So that'll be good. Um, so we'll see everyone for the show before New Year's. That's pretty exciting. That is exciting. So yes. for those of you who are still here, who have been on our show before, look out for an email. You're most likely going to get invited. We uh, are forcing you to come on. So, 100%. Whether you like it or not. Well, I'll tell you what you should do next if you haven't already and you're still here, but you should like and subscribe. Uh, you should maybe share this with your friends if they are into beer or even if they're not into beer, but thinking about getting into beer, uh, kick it around as much as you can. It's the more people we have involved, the, a lot more fun it, it, it becomes. Yes. So we appreciate everybody stopping by. We really enjoy it every week. Um, drink some good beer over the holidays. Don't do drugs. Or do them safely. Drugs are bad, man. I can't stress this enough. And you keep trying to become a drug addict. I know. Late in the game. So try it.